my channel. This is a new, oh goodness, let me turn on that radio, so rude, gosh, Hannah. This is a new little section of my channel called Roadside Rants, and I just wanted to talk about like current events and things going on, articles I've read, and if y'all ever have any suggestions for stuff y'all want me to talk about, um, y'all can definitely comment down below, or if I post this on Facebook, y'all can comment on my Facebook. Because, you know, I just like talking and quite honestly, I have to make an hour drive every single Monday and I'm so bored. And you know what's the sad part? I talk to myself. <laughs> so, I mean, if I'm going to sit here and talk to myself anyway, I just assume record it. I mean, it's the most logical thing to do. I'm so sorry. I look so awful. I tried. I tried. I tried. <laughs> I tried so hard. Because I, I filmed a whole bunch the other day, and I just looked so bad. I looked like troll woman, so that needed to be stopped right then and there. So anyway, um, I have to make a trip all the way across town. First, I need Starbucks. So today, what I wanted to talk about was yoga pants. <laughs> and I know that sounds so stupid, but um, I read an article the other day, and it really made me furious. It made me furious. Um, and it was pretty much an article. This was like two months ago, though. So, old news, Hannah. But still, it was this article saying that women shouldn't wear yoga pants. And you know, I'm a yoga pant fan, so I had to read this article. And apparently, it's saying that women shouldn't wear yoga pants because men are starting to feel like, they're starting to feel sexual feelings towards women who are wearing them. Like, I think the woman even talked about how she was like in a department store and her husband saw a woman in yoga pants and he was like, I'm not even gonna lie, I felt like I was cheating on my wife while looking at that girl in yoga pants. Um, newsflash men. I mean, oh, where do I start? Newsflash, my life isn't about not turning you on. My life is about wearing what I want, doing what I want, succeeding where I want to succeed, and dressing how I feel comfortable. Just because my yoga pants, which by the way, cover from your waist to your ankle, they are pants. If those distract you, then don't look. Don't freaking look. I can't, I'm not gonna change my whole wardrobe just because you feel like you're cheating on your wife. That's not my problem. You forced that upon me and it's not fair. So, to all those men who are just so dang turned on by yoga pants, grow up, grow the frick up. G-T-F-U. Like, grow up. Stop looking at girls in yoga pants. Or look at girls in yoga pants. It doesn't really freaking matter. Because it's not her fault. And I'm not going to stop wearing yoga pants. And I don't think women should feel like, oh my gosh, I'm turning men on with my yoga pants. Oh no. Oh sweet Jesus. I need to throw those to the devil. I need to burn them. No, women, wear what you see fit. I could just be coming back from working out. You men want us skinny anyway, so it's like, <laughs> you're gonna fuss us for wearing workout pants? Oh, uh, one of those things that I just can't even, oh, uh, white girl can't even, oh. Uh. So, definitely let me know what you feel about that. Like, it just seems so stupid. Stupid. It's like, are you an animal? No. I feel like we let men be animals. We let men say those things and it affects us. When we could just be powerful women and be like, look, I'm going to wear what I want. You need to learn self-discipline. I don't need to learn anything. I'm not hurting anybody in this world. You looking at me and feeling like you're going to cheat on your wife, that's hurting your wife, that's hurting your family, that's hurting pretty much your inner workings of your personal life. And I'm not responsible for that. I'm just a girl in the mall looking for like 
or I'm that girl in like Walgreens shopping for tampons. Like I'm not there. I'm not trying to sexualize my yoga pants. I'm just wearing them because they're super comfortable. They're two for 25 at Sam's Club. And honestly, maybe I gained a little weight and I just can't fit in my jeans right now. So back off. Not your place. Not your place. And the saddest part about these articles are they're written, written by other women. Women, stick up for yourself. If my husband literally said, oh, well, that girl in Dillard's with the yoga pants on, she really turned me on. I'd be like, okay, you're still my husband, right? Yeah. Okay. And I'm your wife, right? Yeah. So are you going to leave me for someone else because you saw a girl in yoga pants? Because that's really shallow of you. We need to rethink this. Or we really need to have a discussion about this. And I know like uh, there's uh, like a, in the Bible it says like if you look at a woman with lust it's like cheating on your wife. But honestly, I know it's not the popular thing, but uh, what the heck? It, that's the men's job to handle then. The Bible doesn't say women stop wearing yoga pants. I mean, I think there's something about being modest and uh, that's totally understandable but yoga pants are black pants I have literally blacked out the bottom half of my body and you are still complaining about me being immodest like please think about this please whoever wrote this article boom oh, I'm sorry I'm at Starbucks I'm just gonna pause you for a second I need my passion fruit tea so bad yes Thank the Lord Jesus, they make Trenty now. Yes. <laughs> I didn't think you could go bigger than Venti, but apparently the other day I was like, give me the biggest passion tea lemonade you can give me with six blendas. And he was like, oh, well, we got something bigger than a Venti. You want that? And I was like, hell yeah. Anyway, um, back to what I was talking about with um, men and yoga pants. The thing that I think they're, it, it, let me explain that I understand where they're coming from, but it's still just invalid. Argument invalid. Um, I understand that yoga pants can be kind of um, tight sometimes. Like, you know, you can see stuff with yoga pants on, but quite honestly, the material is really thick. Um, uh, maybe you could see the lumpity bumpity, as I call it, like cellulite and stuff. <sighs> but. I don't feel like women should be ashamed of that. They wear shorts. And they wear long shorts and you can still see cellulite. So, I mean, I'm not here to please every man on this earth. That's just not my verse. That's not my prerogative. I have one man to please and that's my boyfriend. And he doesn't even need to be pleased all the time because we disagree and he's cool with it. Individuals. But, um, wow. Mm. Lord of God, if you haven't tried this, you're not really living your life. But as for yoga pants, there's no excuse. Men are just being men, and you should not cover yourself up. Cover your yoga pants, because that's just extreme. I'm sorry. That's just extreme. This tea gives me life. Uh, May I'm a coon ass me. That's literally on this guy, the back of this guy's truck. In really big letters. May I'm a coon ass me. South Louisiana, everybody. This guy is in front of me again. What kind of ass are you? Okay. Okay, that's clever. It's the, it's the one that says May. Uh, I'm a coon ass me, which is him. And then what kind of ass are you? I would say like a smart ass. I mean, is that the most logical answer? I don't know. This truck just raises a lot of questions in my heart. I just, I don't know anymore. I have to reflect on life because I don't know what kind of ass I am. I'm sure there's 
a quiz on BuzzFeed about it. I just bought a whole bunch of short sleeve shirts, which is so unlike me. Like, if you know me, I am always a quarter length sleeve girl, and I just bought some short sleeve shirts, and I'm so proud of myself, and I know that seems like so small and so little, but I hate my arms, you guys. I have keratosis pilaris, which is pretty much a whole bunch of ugly red bumps all over your arms, and there's really no cure for it. There's like different lotions and stuff that like nothing cures it it just kind of makes it go away a little bit and that stuff is literally like $80 a bottle and I'm sorry I don't have that money um so I'm just learning to be um I'm just learning to be comfortable in my own skin you know what bugs me my arms are hideous any job that I get, someone, everyone's going to ask me why my arms look like that. I've always been asked that. Oh, do you have sunburn? Oh, are you hurt? Oh, like, do you have rosacea? I'm always getting asked about what's wrong with my arms. And I feel like it's kind of rude. But then I understand that people are curious and they want to know and they want to help and la di da I just don't like my arms. And they're gonna be like that for the rest of my life and what I would like is if I can just get tattoos if I could just tattoo all over my ugly arms I would be so happy it would be something more beautiful to me than just like my nasty bumpy arms but no if I go to try to get a big girl job they're gonna ask me why I'm all tatted up and I say well I don't like my arms I mean my arms are already all like messed up and they're all red and they're not the way I want them to look why would me making a change that would pretty much be the same thing but voluntary like make you angry that's what I don't understand why are piercings and tattoos not fully accepted in the professional workplace it's something so fickle understand if someone has maybe some offensive things written on it and maybe if they were um, applying for a job and they said look uh, your tattoos are fine but that tattoo of the F word or that tattoo of the naked lady on your forearm we're gonna need you to cover that because you know we work with other clientele we don't want you know to offend anyone uh, we work with kids you know stuff like that I completely understand about accommodating that in the workplace when it's like I'm sorry you have tattoos sorry we can't hire you because of your tattoos or oh you have piercings I'm sorry we can't hire you because of your piercings it's distracting or like hair color too that's another thing like I would love to dye my hair an awesome like color like a purple or a pink or like make it all galaxy looking or something fun blue or I don't know I just want cool hair but I know if I get cool hair I won't get hired anywhere <sighs> there's nothing wrong with people with tattoos they are just as intelligent and professional as anybody and I know a lot more people in this world who would do what they want and get the tattoos and the artwork that they want on their body if they felt like they were I'm sorry when you have a burp bubble and it just doesn't come out God. Whew. like I was saying it's just stupid that you judge for they judge for like body art it's not that big of a deal like my arms are all marked up anyway can I mark them up the way I want them no, because I need to get a job and I just need to live with these ugly arms. And you know, some people are like, oh, they're not ugly. No, I don't like my arms. Everybody has something about them that they just don't like. And mine is my arms. Because, I don't know, they're all bumpy. And like I said, when people like approach me about them, it's so awkward. Like, what do I say? I'm just like, no. I have keratosis pilaris. Just Google it. You know, I feel like our generation, like the one I'm in, the 90s kids, we're starting to... I am so proud of the 90s kids. Can I tell you how proud of the 90s kids I am? I love you guys. Y'all are like... Y'all are... We 
our generation is becoming so loving and becoming so accepting of others and really game changers and I know like the baby boomers and the older set of people try to tell us that we're ruining the earth and we're ruining everything and we're just lazy kids and we're bad with everybody and we're rude and we're angsty but that is not true at all you guys we are we are amazing I have oh the fact that gay marriage is just sweeping across the country it makes my heart flutter and it wouldn't we couldn't do it without you we couldn't do it without us um whether it's you voting or your parents um seeing what you feel and them voting also or even the parents who have a child that is gay um they feel differently once you know someone they love is part of that spectrum and I just really love how our generation is stepping up they really really are and um transgender equality is coming and I know it's taking a while but man oh it's coming our generation is just gonna it's gonna be so open to technological social um, tension and I know a lot of older people feel like that's a negative thing but what is negative about opening and opening yourself up to new people and new experiences and just really accepting people for who they are and using their strengths and not judging them or turning them away now I will talk oh oh don't get me started on Indiana but what sucks is Anna isn't the first to have like these religious freedom laws and um let me tell you one thing I grew up a Christian I went to church every Sunday I could pray in my home I could even read my Bible at school I could pray at school if I really wanted to by myself I could tell my friends about Jesus if I really wanted to I could go to youth services youth services we could we're now campgrounds we had all of these things uh, we even like went to Walmart and like different places and we handed out water bottles and tracks If that's not religious freedom, I really I don't know what more you're asking for condemning people and turning people away For whatever reason you want business wise That's just ridiculous grow up grow up grow up you're really gonna not get money because you're bigoted and you don't feel like gonna turn down money. You're really gonna turn down money just because you feel like someone is different from you and that scares you and you read it in a book and you felt like, oh, that speaks to me that Jesus doesn't love homosexuals or Allah doesn't love homosexuals that means I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't just let them have pizza at their wedding. No, no. Number one, no one wants pizza at their wedding anyway, so you can, you can go, you can take a seat. You can take several seats. And number two, I always do lists. What is up with me and number one and number two and number three? I don't even. Ugh. Oh. But why are you going to, oh my goodness, oh, and you know what makes me even more sick? You know what makes me so sick, like Flyleaf, like so sick, like play the song. That, they got a GoFundMe account. I'm literally fuming thinking about it. They got a GoFundMe account to help them pay for all the business that they're losing they won't support gay people. Boo, you got a business. You made a business decision. You need to let the chip, let line dogs sleep because you made your bed. Now you go sleep in it. You don't start asking all these conservative people who feel like, oh my gosh, that is so uncool. Their religious freedom has been 
messed up. Nobody wants to eat their pizza. No, no. They made the decision and they weren't even asked. That's the stupid thing. You made the decision to publicly say, well, if any gay people want me to cater their wedding, that's gonna be a no. And then of course you're gonna get the backlash like, boo, that is just, what? It's not racist. What do you call that? That's just discrimination at its finest. For something so stupid, why do you care about who, who sleeps with? I mean, it's also a sin to like, live with your husband for, before you're married. But like, what if, what if the person did that? They'll cater their wedding, but you won't cater like two men's wedding. I don't, I don't, I don't. Hobby Lobby, you open a can of worms. Oh, 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 ah, oh, oh, oh. But like I was saying, business is business. Love is love. We need to make up a word. Is okay. Comment. Is there a word that is like? racist but for like people in homosexual relationships homosexual I'm so oh, I'm so sorry is there like genderist I don't know I don't know um does sexist fall in that category I don't think sexist falls in that category I don't know it's just we need to stop being such wimps like the 2000s kids please Please. Oh. Listen to your parents. I'm not saying that. What am I trying to say? They keep a very open mind. Politically. Keep a very open mind politically and just research things before you just swallow it. Honestly. I know people who vote the way they vote just because their parents vote that way. Did you vote? Yeah. Who'd you vote for? Oh, I just kind of voted for what my parents voted for because that's what they told me to do. No, I really want you guys to take the time and just Google stuff. Like, I wish there was a website where young people could go and they could kind of... I think there is. I, I feel like I've been on these websites several times where, like, you, um, you go on the website and you find out, like, who's running for what in your town or your city or your state or the country and you can look at like what what their um stands are on things like what they stand for what their big thing is that they're trying to accomplish the little things they're trying to accomplish and then you can vote on that and i want you guys to not just listen to what your parents are saying and uh, you know you really should because you should have you should have a lot of different um, places that you're hearing different opinions from, but I want you also to hear opinions from what you're voting for. Have opinions, um, hear opinions from, um, people in gay, like, gay couples. Listen to what their needs are, how they feel, what they've been through in their lives. Start to feel, like, sympathetic towards people. Talk to someone whose mother or grandmother may have been an illegal, um, immigrant, and... <laughs> You just have to open your mind to how people actually feel. You can't just villainize everything that you don't understand. And I feel like that's what some people do. And it's just bringing our country down. And like I said, our generation is just becoming so powerful and so expressive in what we want and how we want it and how we are going to accept people that I feel like the future is so bright and we just need to keep, I mean, I can't talk, I've never voted because personally I never felt compelled to vote for someone. I never felt like someone really had the same issues as I did, like had the same issues in mind as I did. But now that I'm getting a little bit older, I'm starting to think about every little bit counts. Maybe he doesn't feel the same way about abortion as me, but I mean, he's, totally open to um trans rights and gay marriage and you know the things that I 
other things I care about. And it's like, you know what? He doesn't care about this, but he cares about this. And you know what? That is enough for me. So, um, it's just about, I'm, I'm starting to learn personally in my heart as someone who never voted. Oh, <coughs> sorry. I had a moment of choking and there's a guy literally like waving at me in the other car and it's scary. Hello, sir. Things to do in this world. To me, there's a big to-do list on things to work on in this world. But I have this feeling that our generation is getting tired of that to-do list. And we're starting to make it happen. And we're starting to put things in the works. And we're starting to protest. And we're starting to bring to light our struggles and our suffering and I think that's starting to change people's minds and like I said I applaud you I applaud you so much my generation and the generation after us and you know a little bit before us I am just I'm so happy I really I it's becoming so beautiful in so many ways um I, there are still people that are, you know, kind of close-minded. I'm so sorry for the wiggly jiggly. Um, okay. Uh, this bridge is just wiggly jiggly. But, um, yeah. I feel like if we keep going in that direction, and if you have a problem with gay marriage, what is it going to do to your life? What would... What change is it going to do in your life if gays can get married? Like, is that going to mess up your marriage? Is that going to, like... I, I just don't understand how why people are so terrified. Like, it's going to ruin America. I just, I don't think it's going to ruin America. I think it's going to open up more opportunities for, like, wedding venues and for catering businesses. And they can make so much more money because they have this whole new set of people who can get married and it's fabulous it is just fabulous gosh i just got so political oh wow so hot so political much political very precedent can't believe my camera is still shooting i am so proud of it oh my gosh you guys i just you guys I know it's not that dramatic for some people, but for me, working two jobs, paying lots of bills, uh, look, house hunting, I just bought a almost $800 camera. You guys know I love YouTube if I just bought a freaking $800 camera. I am freaking out. <laughs> That's a lot of money for a camera. and. Oh my gosh, I was like shaking last night. I was like, Bill, I'm about to do it. And he's like, do it then. I'm like, no, no, I can't. I don't have to do it. And he's like, Hannah, just, just do it. Just click it. I'm like, I don't know. I really, I'm having complications. And he's like, Hannah, yeah, no. just click it. So I clicked it. And I bought it. And it comes in Wednesday. Today's Monday. <gasps> I, I'm. I'm like dying. I can't wait to touch it. It's a T5i, um, a Canon T5i, and apparently it's really popular on YouTube. I did so much, I, I'm telling you, I did so much research on what camera to get because I honestly, the world of cameras was like so vast and unknown to me. I did so much research into camcorders, I did research into DSLRs, I did research. I love the mirrorless cameras. I plan on getting one soon after I pay this one off. Because of course, that's my credit card. Yes. But after I pay this one off, I'm gonna end up getting the mirrorless so I can vlog in my car. Because right now, this is my phone. I'm vlogging on my phone. So, quality is pretty okay. But I'd really like a camera. It would be like, precise as heck. Well, do I really want the quality that good? Because, I mean, when I'm looking as rough as I do today. No, I really want you to look all up in my crevices of my face. No. Oh, 
But yeah, I'm really excited for it to come in. And that means, oh, trash falling all over my car. That means high quality videos, more Hannah's historical kitchens. And um, I'm going to start doing some embarrassing stories. I have so many. If you haven't read my blog yet, you need to because it is pure brilliant. Sorry. But you really should read my blog because I, I, I have put a lot of time and effort into my blog. And I feel like one of my big... <sighs> some people paint. Some people draw. Some people do artsy things. My artsy thing is like writing and performing. And... Uh, burp, uh, well. They're writing about my embarrassing stories, and they're all completely true. Um, maybe a little exaggerated because you know comedic effect. But believe me, the the happenings, the events are all 100% true. Um, and I really want to act them out, and I really want it to be so funny. And that was another reason I got the big fancy camera was because I um I really wanted those productions productions uh, not productions that sounds so official uh they're not productions like those videos to be really really high quality and to feel like you're there experiencing the embarrassing moments with me so yeah I'm really thrilled and it comes in Wednesday and I can't believe it's gonna come in that fast and I didn't even pay for shipping like that was the free shipping uh, I got it from Best Buy of course I told you this I got it Best Buy for but um oh my god there's so many dead animals on the side of the road today what is the matter I'm really sad all these dead animals are really bumming me out it's payday I should be happy oh look at control more dead animals I should be happy I'm gonna use some Chinese food. Thinking about it. Really thinking about it. I've been literally hunging the hunging. I've been humming the Doug theme song for the past like four days. And I don't know why. Like I've been doing like a soulful version of the Doug theme song. Please. People. Oh. Ah. Uh -uh. Thank you guys so much for watching and make sure you like this video and you subscribe to my channel for more roadside rants. I should be posting them pretty often on Tuesdays and I'll have a new Hannah's Historical Kitchen coming up very soon. So stay tuned for that and as always, keep it historical.